Hello guys, I have decided to do one more Q&A. Today I'm gonna focus a little bit on all the questions about my traveling, my exploring, my how do you plan your trips? All right. How do you get inspiration for your trips? Um, are you ever scared when you're going somewhere alone? Um, getting to the right locations in the mountains and all these things that like kind of like only stay within the area of planning a trip and getting most uh, photography out of that trip because we all know that we have precious time when we travel so how to get most out of it while you're on the road and when you're out there traveling so let's dive right into the questions how do you find inspiration for your trips i have a long list of places and destinations in the world that i really really want to go to just to name a few Places that I really want to go that I haven't been to yet is New Zealand, Patagonia, South Africa. Oh my gosh! So once I nail down a trip that I want to do, let's say now I'm going to the Dolomites, which I did in, in March this year. I've seen so many photographs from the Dolomites. It's all over Instagram. It's what I would call a saturated destination. So how do you come about, you know, the fact that all kind of angles has already been shot, you know, you're not necessarily going to find uh, very unique locations that has never been shot before, but actually it doesn't interest me too much. I don't care uh, how many people have shot Sitila 2500, um, because for me, it's just, every time I see a photo from there, I'm thinking, why on earth haven't I already been there and made my photograph? So, of course, I'm looking at other people's work, uh, but I'm actually not planning too much ahead. I don't want to plan like, okay, on the first day I'm going there and the second day I'm going there. And I don't really do that. I want to go to a destination and not having too much planned. Um, that's the way I like to work, that's the way I like to travel. Um, if everything was planned ahead, I would not enjoy it as much and it would not for me be uh, true adventuring. Quite often, I'm honest here, I don't know where I'm going in the morning when I wake up in my, if I'm on a road trip and I have a camper van, I don't know what I'm going to do that day when I wake up. The way I get inspired is like on Instagram when I see a photo that I like, I take uh, a screenshot and I get I, I save them in a folder and when in the morning I get my coffee I, I, I scroll through some of these and then it's like okay this location looks great where am I today on a map okay that location is over there you need to plan for the nice light you know and pretty often that is either sunrise or sunset that's where the you get the most epic shots uh, if there is a sunset but it's also a way for me to plan the day I want to travel to this lake. This lake could work fine in the middle of the day, but for sunset I need to be at this location. I want to shoot this mountain and, um, and then I find out my way. I'm kind of doing the research on the go. That's really what I like, you know. I don't want to be waking up and, and just uh, know exactly, okay, I'm just gonna start the car and go there, and then I take a shot, then I go there, and then I hike up there, take a shot. For me, that is not the way I like to travel. So I do it differently uh, and, and, and way more loose than most people would probably like. The next question, sunrise or sunset photographer? What do you prefer? Uh, for me, it's often the location that decides for me. Um, if I can, I look at Google Maps and I, I can see where's east, where's west, where does the sun rise, where does it go down? Okay, this mountain is like that. I want to shoot it from this angle. Okay then it would be nice to have the sun coming from the side and not from like behind. Uh, so I, I plan accordingly to those things. When I'm at home, I'm not really a morning person. So I rarely see a sunrise when I'm in Denmark. But that changes completely when I'm out traveling. Uh, because that's the, the reason why I travel is to photograph. I need to be in a specific location at the right time and that could very well be sunrise. I really, really, really enjoy uh, the morning, getting up really early 
in darkness and it's cold and it's like you're putting on all your layers and all your clothing and you go out and you wait and then you see the world begin. There's something pure to the sunrise that you don't have at sunset. The sunset is more busy in some ways. It's like the, the day has been going and everyone has, is awake and then it, it turns to night. Um, that's a beautiful time of day, but there's something pure about the mornings that I really like. And, and often you get this feeling in the morning, you're like the only person experiencing right now, this moment alone. And I love that. So to answer the question, and uh, eh, I can really, uh, because I enjoy both of them really much. But if I have to choose one of those, I would probably say sunrise for the reason I just stated. It's such a clear, clean, quiet feeling you can get when you're out in the landscape all alone, seeing the sunrise, knowing that this day is gonna be great. Some of the questions here I've picked out is also very uh, destination minded. They are very, very specific for a destination and I'm gonna go a little bit, I thought they would like make in a good mix uh, in this kind of uh, Q&A. So one question is, uh, do you prefer the north or the south coast of Iceland? I have to say that I've only been to Iceland once. The north coast is less traveled. It's, in my opinion, a little bit more adventurous. There's not as many uh, wild, obvious locations uh, for photos that there is on the south coast, where you're driving on the ring road and it's like literally like every half hour, there is a new location you could stop at. Uh, being a waterfall, a crashed airplane, a beach with ice uh, all over, uh, beautiful mountain vistas or glaciers or the list goes on and on and on. Uh, it's pretty unique that south coast of Iceland but um, somehow it's a little bit it's also for me a little bit too easy. It's um, you drive in your car and you stop get out of the car you get some photos you get back in your car you drive on to the next and you can actually do that for several days on the south coast of Iceland which is Really great if you don't have much time and you just want to nail a lot of shots. Um, but the way I'd like to travel, I prefer destinations where I will have to maybe hike a little bit to get to it, because that also makes it more tranquil. That also makes it a little bit more remote. Uh, you have the feeling of getting the whole area for yourself. Uh, and that is just impossible in many places in the south, on the south coast of Iceland. Let me put it this way. If I was to go to Iceland tomorrow, um, and I would have to go either on the south or on the north coast, I would probably take the north coast. Because for me, there's more exploration. You need to work a little bit more. You need to drive a little bit further. You need to walk a little bit further. And for me, that, that is just, um, that's more fulfilling when I'm traveling. The next question is one I'm not asked very often, but one I'm thinking a lot about. Are you ever scared when you're solo traveling and you stay alone somewhere really remote? And the answer is yes. Being alone in a camper van, just parking somewhere completely out in the wilderness, the wind is howling or it's raining and it's dark outside. It's, it's my, it could be winter in Iceland. Things just creep into you, you know, like the car has been pushed around and it's just plain out scary sometimes uh, to be alone in the, in the wilderness. There could be also some wild animals somewhere. I know nothing ever happens, but that could, you can feel very, very vulnerable. It's not for everyone, I think. Um, you know, I'm a fairly big guy. I'm not afraid of anyone coming and mocking me or anything like that. But there's just some other things coming into play. And I have very often been in locations in Iceland or in the Faroe Islands in a tent alone or parked somewhere, even in California. It's just something you need to take to take into consideration uh, when you go very remote places alone that um, your mind just playing tricks with you. I don't know how to describe it, but it can be quite scary. Straight out scary sometimes, for sure. All right, this is a favorite of mine and this is one I'm being asked quite a lot, also by my, uh, the participants on my workshops there. Uh, what's your favorite location 
to shoot on the Faroe Islands. And in that question is also, what is your favorite hike? On the Faroe Islands, that's a lot of, you know, there's not many locations that you just drive up to and you just shoot and you go back into the car, like you can do many places in Iceland. On the Faroe Islands, you, you kind of need to make an effort to get to the locations. There's almost always a bit of hiking involved. It can be also a bit more than a bit. It can actually be two, three, four hours to get to these locations. And, uh, and I, I, I always love that because first and foremost, I'm an explorer, I'm a, I'm a hiker and I'm a climber. And I need to get out in the nature in a way on foot that, that, will, that is just the, 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 for me the right way uh, to experience landscapes. Favorite hike, favorite location. Hmm, there's so many great. The island of Kelsoy where you have to take a ferry. Every time I'm there, I'm getting totally different shots from the time before. And when I look at those photographs, I just cannot wipe the smile off my face. Uh, this island, for some reason, has so many different locations and so many different light conditions. Photographs like this or Photographs like this and, 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 and they, they are so different. I would say that if you go to the Faroe Islands tomorrow and you are only allowed to go on one hike, go to Kelsoy, go to the Kelo Lighthouse and explore that whole area out there. There are so many compositions to be had. There's so many photos. You can make one bang after another. Just stay out there for the whole day and you will experience the ever-changing conditions you get on the Faroe Islands. That is, for me, it's just something so unique in the world that I think everyone needs to experience it. Just go there. You will never, ever, ever regret going to the Faroe Islands. Always go to Kelsoy every time you go to the Faroe Islands. It's such an amazing place. Okay, we are wrapping it up. The last question is, what's your next destination? And um, I have a few, uh, but the next big location for me will be Iceland in October. I've been wanting badly to go back to Iceland for almost a year. There are so many locations that I still haven't been to. Also some locations that I visited on my last trip where the, the weather was so bad and so low hanging clouds that even though I waited for three or four hours, it just never lifted. It was one of those days, it just never opens up. Also, I'm going there to, uh, to research a few uh, places. I have a new workshop coming up. This is gonna be my first workshop on Iceland. It's gonna be in May next year. I will put a link in the description um, to, so you can read more about it if you're interested. It's gonna be, of course, as always on my workshop, it's gonna be full of exploration. It's gonna be full of adventure. It's gonna be with some hiking. It's gonna, it's gonna be epic. It's gonna be full of great, great, great moments and a lot of landscape and outdoor photography. It's just a photographer's dream up there. So I'm looking very much forward to that. So okay, let's, let's wrap up this video. Don't forget to like it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. And my plan is to upload a new video every week from now on. So sometimes it's gonna be something like this. Sometimes it's gonna be with a lot of, you know, tips and tricks. And hopefully soon also there will be some vlogs where I will bring you with me out on on shoots and, uh, and, and it will be a little bit uh, less static than sitting in, in my office. And um, I'm looking very much forward to that and uh, thank you for watching. I will see you in next week's video. Take care.